on here and let everyone know I'm going to start a new video series to help people new to crochet. Um, when I started out with crocheting, there was a lot of things I didn't quite understand, such as what to do at the end of the round, how many rows, um, where to insert my hook to actually crochet, and I just wanted to go over some of the key points to help people because when I started out with like with any new hobby, it was kind of a little bit overwhelming and stressful. Especially if you're at home and you're with someone that doesn't crochet at the moment. It might be hard to understand certain things without showing somebody. Or knowing what you're asking or what problem you're having. Also, I wanted to make very beginner friendly patterns that can be functional once you have it created. Such like this, the Cup Cozy. Basically, everyone I know has either a tumbler or a coffee cup, kind of like this. And they make really great quick projects to learn basic stitching, um, how to count your chains, your stitches, your rows, and such. And it's actually worked in a flat panel. So all you're learning to do is go back and forth, back and forth, and kind of get at some of the key terms you kind of need to know and getting a hang for it and learning tension. I know when I first started out, I, I tackled big projects and I got overwhelmed because I didn't know where I was going wrong and didn't know where I was having the problems because it was such a big project, you really didn't see it till like you get halfway through. But with being such a small, simple project, you're gonna notice things quicker, but you're also gonna be able to not get overwhelmed by it. And I'm hoping with learning certain small patterns like this and learning small stitches and very basic things, it's going to allow you to have building blocks to work off of. So after you're kind of well into knowing what you're doing, it's going to be a lot easier to take something as simple as this and understand the kind of construct of it. But knowing the stitches and learning how to like move up and measure that you're going to be able to take something as simple as this and build off of it to go into a more intermediate or advanced beginner pattern or project and be less overwhelmed. So you're going to be able to hopefully look at this and kind of get the concept so when you go to another pattern, not if not mine, someone else's, and be able to look at it and be like, okay, well, this is what I need to do. This is how I'm going to achieve this without getting flustered and overwhelmed or anxious or upset that it's not going the right way because you'll understand some more key skills to move along to that. I know when I first started, I had problems. I would just read something really quickly and go on. I'll admit I still do that sometimes, certain things. You not read the whole pattern or do my gauge or something like that. So the basic idea from taking away from this is being able to understand basic stitches, how to execute basic stitches and being able to measure your length and knowing to put knowing where to put your hook and to complete the stitches. So basically just beginner skills, very simple, and hopefully this gives you something. Like I said, learning how to do a panel like this is going to open up so many doors to make different projects, such as hats, scarves, a blanket if you want to, stuff like that. So just kind of doing small projects is helping you kind of like get the taste for it. And hopefully, you know, you're going to walk away with a little bit more understanding of it. But enough about that. We can jump straight into what you're going to need. And I'll meet you back here in just a second. Okay, for today's pattern, we're going to be doing a single crochet cup cozy. It's very simple, very customizable to the size of your cup. You can make it as long as you need to for your cup or as high as you'd like. Today we're going to be doing this size. 
Um, it's a basic Starbucks size cup. I got these. They're reusable, so I use these for my coffee because the lid's very secure on it. But it's very customizable. Um, say if your cup's bigger or smaller, you can adjust your lengths to that. Or, like I said, if you prefer, like, a wider, um, cup cozy, you can do that as well. But say we're going to be doing this size. It's very simple. Um, basically, you're going to be learning how to chain, how to single crochet, how to do the rows, and then sewing it up. Basically, just the smallest amount of crochet work. And also, at the end, you'll have a functional piece. They're really quick to do. Great gifts. Everyone I know has one of these cups or a tumbler similar, similar to this. But we're going to jump right into what you're going to need. I use, I'm using Karen One Pound yarn. It's a medium four weight yarn. I would suggest to anyone beginning to crochet, I started off with medium four weight. It's very, it's thick enough for you to see the stitches, but it's also thin enough to where it's not going to tire your hand out. I know the thicker yarn you use, the tire, more tiring it is on your hands. And it's just a very simple, most, I wouldn't say most used. It's a very common used yarn. Um, also, I would say recommend acrylic. I've tried using cotton when I was first starting to learn to crochet. And it's somewhat a little bit tougher to crochet with. Not impossible, but it doesn't glide over your hook just as much. But I would recommend 100% acrylic. It is machine and washable and dryer safe. So you can wash these, throw them in the dryer. I usually just throw them in the washer and then I lay them flat to dry just because it's a lot easier for me to do. So you're going to need that a medium four, -waisted, four worsted weight yarn, 100% acrylic. And then you're going to need a size 5 millimeter crochet hook or letter H. Just depends on what your hook says. I know some hooks go by alphabet but some go by millimeters. Um, but yes, I would recommend for this pattern to use a 5 millimeter hook with size H. Any 5 millimeter, it doesn't have to have the, the cushion on it. This is just what I prefer to use. It's a Clover and More hook. I just find it a lot more comfortable to crochet with. But I started out with the basic metal hooks. So any 5 millimeter hook. Also, a tapestry needle. You see that there. It's a thick needle with a rounded end and a pretty wide eyelet to get the yarn through. These come in a lot of different types. I've seen plastic ones. I have a couple plastic ones. That's what I started off with. I prefer the metal one myself because it's easier and it glides through when you're sewing up the end a little bit easier. Also, it's easier to weave in tails. But any of these will work. A plastic one's perfectly fine to work. start off with. And then you're going to need a pair of scissors. These are my little tidy embroidery scissors. They're fairly sharp, but I try to keep a small pair so I can just throw it in my crochet case or the bag I'm crocheting and take it with me and have it basically they're small enough to where they're not going to be like in my way. But craft scissors work, regular scissors, any scissors, anything basically you can cut through your yarn with. And then measuring tape. This one I've had forever. It's been through like so much wear. Um, to measure around your cup and to measure your finished piece and your chains to make sure you're right where you need to be whenever you chain your crochet project or chain your stitches, my bad. So you're going to want one of these. Also, like I said, you want the cup you're going to make the cozy for. Like today we're going to be using this. And so we're going to need the measuring cup or the measuring tape and the cup to get the right size you're needing. But like I said, today we're doing the average Starbucks cup and we're going to be measuring that. Like I said, this is going to be, these are all fairly basic things to have on hand. You don't necessarily need them, but it helps. So I will meet you back and we'll jump straight into the pattern. Okay, starting out for the pattern, we're going to grab our cup that we're measuring. For today, I'm going to use this reusable Starbucks cup. And what you're going to do is measure around the widest part of the cup that you're going to want your crochet cup cozy to be. So I'm measuring this and it is 9 inches. So what I'm going to aim for is whenever I chain to crochet 8.5 to about 9 inches of chains. 
So I'm going to want it a little bit smaller, but not too much smaller than the measurement because with crochet, whenever you crochet something, it's going to stretch just a little bit. But the yarn and the stitches are going to stretch just a little bit. So you'd rather it be a little bit too small versus too big. Because like I said, inevitably it'll get a little bit looser. So we're going to be aiming for about eight and a half to nine inches when we crochet our chains. Like I said, it's a little bit better to crochet a little bit tighter than it is a little bit looser. Because like I said, it'll once you put it on there, it'll start to stretch just a little bit. So we're going to write that down. We're going to write down eight and a half to nine inches for the chain. Okay. And so when we're going to start off is we're going to chain a length. I've already made this pattern for myself with this. So I did for this pattern right here, I did 32 inches or not 32 inches, 32 chains to make up for this. So we're going to First, we're gonna locate the end of our tail. I try to use the yarn work from the center um, of the ball. So I'll try to get the center tail. I know sometimes it can be hard to locate the center um, strand. Some people actually work from the outside and use the outside strand and work around the skein or the ball. I try to try to pull from the center. You don't have to. Um, I just find it a little bit easier for me to work from there because I don't have to constantly like unwind it. It's whatever you choose, but I'm going to get a little bit closer so I can show you, explain this. So the first thing we're going to do is do a slip knot. So you wrap the end of the yarn, the end of the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. And then the way I do it is I'll turn my fingers to where they're like this. And you see that working piece of yarn, the part that's still attached to it. You're going to grab it with two fingers and then pull it through the loop you just created on your fingers to make a slip knot. It'll be something like that. And what you'll do next, I'll do it one more time real quick. So wrap this work the wrap this strand of yarn around your fingers, two fingers, and then turn. You're gonna grab the working part of the yarn with your two fingers and pull it through the loop. And then you'll insert your hook into the slip knot and pull. And the way I do it is I'll pull the, the edges like that to make it securely snug around the hook. Not too tight because if it's too tight it's going to be really hard to work with. So you want it slightly snug and that creates your slip knot. So you'll have a little bit of tail right here. You're not going to be working with this tail. I usually leave a little tail like that to kind of sew in at the end so you can um, make sure it doesn't come unraveled. Also whenever I sew it up you'll sew from the top back down to the bottom where this is located and I use that to kind of tie it to make sure it doesn't come unravel. Okay, so to start off with, for my pattern, for my cup size, I got chain 20 or chain 32 for it. So to make a chain, what you do is you'll yarn over and then pull through the loop that the slip knot created. So you'll pull through this loop on your hook. And then you have a chain. So that's one. Once again, like this is considered the loop on your hook, so you'll yarn over. Grab the yarn, the yarn over yarn with the top, your hook, and pull through that loop. And I'm not gonna lie, when I was little, this is like the only thing I could do when I was um, learning to crochet. Learning to crochet with my grandma. All I did was make chains all day. That's all I did every day. So, like I said, yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook to make a chain. And you'll want to do this 32 times. And whenever you get done, it's going to, what you're doing is creating these little chain spaces to work into for your stitches for the next round. And see that that's one, that's two, and that's three. So you're going to continue this until you have 32 of those. So you go one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, 
16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. And I forgot to mention at the beginning of this, if you want to unwind some of the yarn or pull a certain amount of yarn out to give you a little bit room to work with so you're not like constantly pulling at the yarn ball, I usually do this. I'll pull out a certain amount of working yarn. Just give me a little leeway so I can, when I start crocheting, I, stro I can crochet for a little while without having to fuss with the ball. Not enough to where it gets tangled, just enough to give you a little bit of free room to work with. And so when you get to the end of your chaining, you're gonna have something that looks like this. It's gonna kinda look like a braid. And like I said, you'll have these little tiny like spots, which are called chains. And you're gonna be making these so you can work your single crochets back into. Or if you're on a different pattern, you're gonna use these to work your stitches into. But you're gonna make sure, what I always do before I start any project when I have to chain things, is I will go through and count my stitches, my chains, before I move on to make sure I had the accurate amount because if you don't count them beforehand, it can usually set you up with problems long, later on. So you wanna make sure you have enough chains to complete the amount of stitches you, that is required for the pattern. So what we're gonna do here, see, I'll show you how to locate and count them differently. So what you're looking for the chain is the V's. Let me put it over here, the V's. So you'll see this one that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32. And your top chain is going to look something like this. But the chain is, the, way, the best way to look for the chain is looking for the V of the stitch that it made, that the chaining made. But... Let me pause this and I'll be right back to show you how to do the single crochets. Okay, so we're going to start off with a single crochet. And the way the thing I always had a problem with whenever I first learned was learning to crochet is that I didn't understand how the second chain from the hook or the third chain from the hook or where to begin with. So the way this works is this isn't considered a chain. This is considered the working loop or the loop on your hook. So the chains are right here. So when it tells you to work in say the first, second, or third, or even sometimes like the fourth or fifth loop from the hook, you're gonna be counting these as your chains. These are the chains you're gonna crochet into. So for this pattern, I'm going to crochet into the second chain from the hook, which is, so that's one and two. The best way to locate where your chains are I know that was another problem for me. I didn't understand where they were. Is when you look at it, you're going to see your chains. They're these little V's right here. They look kind of like a braid. But each V is a chain. So we're going to be working not in from this V, but the second. So you'll skip this one and crochet into that one. So the way to do a single crochet is you're going to, like I said, second chain from the hook. So not the first, but the second. So in the second chain of the hook, you're going to insert your hook through that B, straight through the middle of it. And then you're gonna yarn over, which is yarn over your hook. Sorry, it's holding another weird angle. And then pull through that chain. And then you'll have two working loops on your hook. And so what you do for a single crochet is you'll yarn over and through pull through both loops. So for a single crochet, like I said, you'll, you're crocheting into that single, the second one. So to continue, you're going to, once, like I said, I had a problem with where to locate to put my hook up first. So you'll insert your hook in between that chain right there, in between the V, yarn over, pull through that chain, 
and then you'll have two loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over again and then pull through both loops on your hook. And you'll do that all the way down. So, like I said, insert through the V. So you'll have like that. Yarn over and then pull through both loops. And you'll have two loops on your hook. Yarn over and then pull through both loops. At first, it's like even, I'm going to say even being as far along as I am in crocheting, which is like steps below a lot of people but doing the foundation the first row always seems to be a little bit more difficult because you have a little bit less in your hands to actually maneuver around and it can be kind of tedious on your hand to begin with but you're just going to continue to single crochet in every chain across and at the end you should have 31 single crochets but you're just going to continue to insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And you're going to make sure to do it into the next stitch. Because if you continue to do it into the same, you're going to be adding way too many stitches. You just want one in every single chain. So you're going to put one in every single V across. And like I said, you're just going to continue down the row like this. And like I know, I when I first started out having it and controlling it, the yarn with my hands was very difficult because it's learning a new motor skill actually with your hands and eventually it'll the more you crochet the more it becomes a muscle memory but even still today sometimes my hands are just like no you know they'll do whatever they want to for a moment but after you get this first row down it's going to be a lot easier one one <laughs> to see where your stitches are but two, it's going to have give you a little bit more to hold on to and maneuver. So it's going to be a little bit more comfortable for your hands. It's going to take a while for your hands to get used to crocheting a little bit. But overall, it, it you catch on pretty quickly. So like I said, you're going to single crochet in to each one down the line. And to make sure to pull, insert your hook, pull through. Insert your hook, yarn over, so you'll have two loops, yarn over, pull through two. And you can pause this video and go as slow and steady as you need to. You can um, rewind this video if you need to look at something that you might need to refresh on. But I will meet you back at toward the end of the row and I'll see you in just a second. Okay, so we're coming up to the end of the round and last two chains. So like I said, I'm gonna insert your hook into the V, into the chain, yarn over, pull through. So you have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through two. And it's very important when you're doing a panel or a square or basically anything really to make sure you crow into, you single crochet or you do that stitch into that last stitch. I used to have a problem where this would be really tight right here and I wouldn't notice that that was a chain that I needed to work into. So you always make sure to crochet into that last stitch you're working on. So you're going to you're going to insert your hook into that last chain, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over and pull through two. And I've noticed one of the things I made a common mistake about when I first started out, and I heard from other people starting out, that they forget. And certain patterns would be ones that you don't chain or you chain a certain amount at the end. For this purpose, we are going to, for this pattern, we're going to yarn over and chain one at the end of every round. What this is allowing you to do is to give you a turning chain so when you work the other way, turn your work around. But also you're making a foundation to work up to the height of the next level to keep it even and keep the sides even. So you're going to, like I said, yarn over at that last bit and chain one as your turning chain. And then you're going to turn your work, 
you're going to flip it to where it's all the stitches are on this side and your working yarn is going to be right here. So another big thing I've noticed that I had problems with and I've known people to have problems with, I was discussing it earlier with my mom because she's wanting to start this, is to, she doesn't know where, or I didn't know where, to work my first single crochet. I would always either mess up and work into the chain where you're not supposed to work, or I would skip the first stitch and accidentally work over here, not knowing, you know, they say, do not ch work into your turning chain, so I wouldn't think. But some patterns won't require you to put a single crochet in your first chain. Some patterns will count the turning chain as your first single crochet. But for the purpose of this pattern, we are going to definitely skip that turning chain right here and be working a single crochet into the first single crochet of the round. So it's the last single crochet you did, the first one you're working into now. So what you're going to do is you'll locate that first single crochet and it'll have a V on top so not the chain but this one and then you see that spot right there beside the stitch where that little hole is underneath the V you're going to insert your hook there where you're gonna have it's gonna look like this from the top you're gonna have that V on top of it but you're gonna work into that side insert your hook into the side of that stitch yarn over pull through just like you did with the single crochet in the first round so you're gonna have two working loops on your hook and then you're gonna yarn over pull through both loops on your hook and that's how you do your first single crochet like I said when I first started out it's it's been a minute but I remember having a problem not knowing where I place my single crochet or how to turn I didn't know how to continue on the same panel like I said when I was really young and my grandma tried to teach me very patient woman try to teach me to crochet I would just make chains because I wouldn't know how to go back the other way so like I said you would skip the turning chain but single crochet into that first single crochet you did of the round and then so we're gonna do it one more time real quick like I said skip the turning chain single crochet into the first single crochet so what you're gonna do is insert your hook into the side underneath the, two, the V on top, so you're going to that side piece, yarn over, pull through, so we have two loops on your hook, yarn over again, and then pull through the two loops on your hook. So like I said, I had a problem locating where to put my hook to do the single crochet when I first started out. It didn't occur to me until recently that, I mean, I didn't know, and now it's like, it's so common to me, I'm, so... As a beginner, I fully remember having a problem and struggling on knowing where to put my stitch. So like I said, you'll go into the side, right there that little hole is underneath the V of the top, you go right there. So you'll have a V on top of your hook, but you're going into the side, yarn over, pull through, so you'll have two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. Once again, insert your hook into the side of the single crochet, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And like I said, it's, it's a new motor skill. Everyone crochets and holds their hook differently. Everyone yarns over differently or holds their working yarn. Um, I've seen my niece, she started to learn to chain crochet or do the chain stitches. And she physically goes and wraps each one around and then pulls it over. It's, it's a motor skill. Everyone has their distinct style. Just like everyone has certain ways they cut onions or hold a pencil or paints. Everyone's going to have a different way. So if you have a certain way you like to hold your yarn or hold your hook, by all means, whatever's comfortable for you and what's going to be comfortable for your hands to do. So... Like I said, you insert your hook into the side of the stitch, yarn over, and then pull through so you have two. Then you yarn over again, pull through the two on your hook. And you just continue to do that down. I'll try to do it as slow as I can. 
but eventually you're going to find your own rhythm of how you crochet. I, depending on the day, depending on my tiredness or wake level, I crochet differently. My tension, your tension no matter what, you have a pretty consistent one. Like, I tend to crochet pretty tightly. Um, you have a consistent tension usually you're gonna eventually learn your tension you're gonna get comfortable in your own way of doing things um everyone like i said everyone's style is different everyone's tension is different um you kind of build up your own over time i crochet tightly um so in off days if i'm like i've heard if you're very anxious or tired that your tension can somewhat be tight um, if you relax, your tension kind of gets a little bit looser. It's kind of like body language and I guess how your muscles react, but it's, it's all personal basis. Like I said, I, I crochet tend to do it a lot tightly. So when I try to do certain patterns, it's sometimes I have to adjust myself to the pattern with a different size hook or a different size yarn. And second, and it just depends on, you know, your muscles in your hands and how you hold stuff but yeah you're just gonna single crochet into every loop down this row and you're gonna have 31 stitches and we're gonna continue to do this at a steady pace don't try to rush don't try to like you know get too anxious about it because one you're learning but two it's just a skill and it's supposed to be peaceful and, you know, relaxing. It relaxes me. It helps with my anxiety. It helps with, um, it helps me with anxiety, some depression, you know. It keeps me doing something. And it makes me happy at the end of the day, you know, when I'm working on something, I feel really accomplished doing it. And I like making homemade gifts and homemade stuff for people. But, you know, just you just try to do it as so, like slow and at pace as possible for you. And it gives you time to learn what you're doing and pay attention to really what you're doing. And understand how you're doing it and where to go. And you're not, the slower you do and the more time pace you do it, the less mistakes you're going to make. I always have to remind my niece when she's doing certain things that she has to like slow down and actually understand what she's doing so if she messes up at the end she's like okay well this is where I went wrong and you know but yeah just continue to single crochet down the row you insert your hook into the side yarn over pull through two and then you have two on your hoop pull through two yarn over and then insert your hook again yarn over pull through have two on the hook pull through two and I'm trying my hardest to not go faster <laughs> Or talk fast, one, but go faster than I can show on the screen because I have a tendency to talk fast and to, like, try to not explain things. I just kind of go with it because I'm usually, you know, running by myself doing this. But you're just going to continue down, and if you need to pause, go back, look at stuff, please do so. Um, but I will meet you at the end of this row if you want to pause this and kind of catch up, and I will meet you at the end. Just take your time, and I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so we are coming up into the last two stitches of the row. When I was beginning to learn to crochet, I always had a problem not being able to locate the last stitch of the row, and I would accidentally omit the last stitch because I didn't know that it was, in fact, the last stitch. And so my work would start slowly looking like it was a trapezoid and working itself inward. And I wouldn't get that clean edge and it wouldn't be squared. So for this pattern, we're definitely wanting a rectangle panel. So we're going to make sure to crochet into that last stitch. And like I said, it's kind of weird because you don't think of that as a stitch when you're first beginning out. I know I didn't. But you're going to yarn over. And then pull through that loop. Have two loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through two. Like I said, this kind of looks wonky, and it's made from the chain one you skipped in the beginning. And it's going to have like a little weird bubbled edge, but you can tell that it's a stitch. But if you turn it upwards, you're going to see that little V right there. So you're going to definitely want to 
single crochet and crochet into that loop. No matter the pattern, unless it omits it, you're going to always make sure to crochet into that last loop so you keep a nice clean edge, everything's even, and you're not omitting a stitch. So, like I said, you're going to yarn, you're going to insert your hook into that stitch, and you have the V on the top like that. Yarn over, and then pull through. Yarn over one more time, pull through two. And just like the beginning of round two, or row two, my bad. Row two, you're going to yarn over and turn. So it gives you a nice clean edge, as you can see. A nice clean straight edge, even, to work from. And you're going to turn your work. And before we move on, I remembered one of the things I definitely did not pay attention to when I first started crocheting was making sure I had the right stitch count or being able to see and count the stitches before I moved on. So I would have problems having either too many or too less chains. And it's a lot easier if you count in between the rows to make sure you have the right amount of stitches. So if you don't get halfway through your project and there is too many stitches, too less stitches, and you can correct it quite, you know, early on. But the way to we'll pull a little bit yarn through that chain. The best way to locate and count your stitches is from above. Especially, say, if you're working with dark yarn. But you see the... Let me pull a little bit closer. Let me line this up real quick. Sorry. Okay. So, the way that works is you'll see the little V on top right there. That is one single crochet. And the best way to count that is to turn your work facing toward the top of it. And you'll see the little V. So, that's one single crochet. And you'll count each V going down and for this particular pattern we have 31 so you'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, let me put this right here, 30, and 31. And by counting, by counting your stitches in between each row ensures you that you'll be able to see how many stitches you have if you've done too many or too less so you can correct it then versus halfway through your pattern and you realize your stuff's gotten smaller or bigger or you might have missed a stitch but it's a lot easier to pinpoint early on by counting your stitches between rows. I still count my stitches between rows because certain patterns more advanced patterns call for certain stitch counts to complete the design in the look of the pattern this one's very simple so you'll basically have to have 31 single crochets in each row so by counting between rows you're ensuring that like I said you'll have enough stitches and it's going to be even but we're going to start with row three. Like I said, you already had your chain one, so you'll insert your hook back in after you counted. And you'll turn your work. And just like every, row two, from row three to 11, for this pattern, you're going to be doing row two over and over again. So you're basically going to be chaining one, turning, single crocheting, and every stitch along the row, so you have 31 stitches across the row and every and then you're going to chain one and do the same thing back. So basically this is a very simple repeat pattern. So you can get the hang of one single crocheting, two turning, but three kind of getting the feel for crochet, learning how to count your stitches, counting your rows, um, getting your tension down, seeing even and how it kind of works. So when you get onto bigger patterns or more intricate patterns, you can kind of recognize and work those patterns and those stitches with a lot more ease. I know a lot of problems I have when I first began, I started seeing these intricate patterns and I'm like, oh yeah, I can do this. It's fine. And then I would jump into it and I would get kind of a little bit overwhelmed because I didn't know and understand the basics on how to count, how to get it even, my tension, counting the numbers, you know, 
very simple stuff that I didn't build up. So by doing beginner patterns that are simple, repetitive, it allowed me to understand and replicate what they were talking about. So we are going to chain one, insert your hook for row three, and then we're going to, you have a chain one right here, so you, you make sure to not single crochet into the chain one, but into the first single crochet. So you'll yarn, you insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, so you have two, yarn over, pull through two. And you have to make sure, unless the pattern says otherwise, that you have to single crochet. Sorry about that, my camera cut off for a second. But, as I was saying, you're going to want to make sure to, when you turn your work, to skip that turning chain and make sure you only single crochet into the single crochet. So you're going to insert your hook, yarn over, pull through. So you have two on your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook. And you're going to continue to single crochet down this row for row 4 through 11. And the reason we're doing this is a very simple pattern. But also you're learning how to identify if you go somewhere, if you go wrong somewhere. But also you're getting used to knowing where to crochet, how many stitches to crochet, and kind of work on your tension. And I personally like these very simple patterns, especially for learning and starting out. I love doing simple patterns because it's not you don't get overly over, overwhelmed but you don't get frustrated trying to do something too overly complicated that just feels at the end you kind of feel defeated with it and by doing something small and simple and repetitive you're going to come out with a very clean but very easy pattern and a piece that's functional at the end but like I said we're going to do at the end of each round, we're going to chain one turn and we're going to single crochet all the way back from row four until 11. But like I repeated before, you're going to want to go at a slow pace, whatever's comfortable for you. So at the end, you know, you're not overly anxious, but you're able to understand and work the single crochet a lot easier and it's going to build your motor muscles in your hands. And you're going to be able to have consistent tension, work on your tension. But you're going to, at the end of this, I hope you're going to have a couple skills to build off of. So if you go on to a more advanced pattern or someone else's pattern or another one of these patterns, it's going to be a lot easier to understand looking at it and the instructions or the pattern on how to execute the pattern with few um, problems as possible and it's going to make it a lot more easy to have a finished product and you're going to feel a lot less anxious a lot less stressed about it learning the skills slowly and taking your time with it I know I had a lot of problems when I first started out I wouldn't read the pattern fully I wouldn't do certain stuff and I would just jump in you know feet first not paying attention and try to do it quickly and not taking it slowly and trying to fully understand what's going on and looking at my work and I would end up with something that's like completely either too big or wonky on one side accidentally decreasing accidentally skipping stitches so by going slow and at your own pace you're going to be able to make sure you crochet into all the stitches have a good even consistency you're not going to become overwhelmed with it but if you want to continue or actually go back and look at any of the other steps previously and refresh you know look back on some things go ahead and do it if you want to pause the video and work on it from here into row 11 please do so but I'm going to pause it right here and I will meet you back at row 11 to show you the finished panel, but also to show you the overall look before we cut our tail and sew it up. 
So, like I said, just take it slowly, easily at your own pace. Um, try not to rush through it. Um, I feel like the more I rush, the more times I make mistakes. But I will meet you back at the end of row 11. Okay, and at the end of row 11, what I like to do is after I single crochet into that last loop right there, I like to chain one on every time I crochet something to kind of secure it in there and to knot it so it doesn't come unraveled. So at the end, you should have a piece. Let me fix this. A piece like this. It's going to be slightly, a little bit, like, slightly bowed right there because that's where your single crochet, your, your chains are. And it's always tighter where your chains are than it is at the top of your working, of your stitches, your single crochets. So we're going to make sure whenever we're done, we're going to leave that a little bit loose before we cut it. We're going to double check to make sure we have the right amount. So we have nine inches across. And for this, like I said, I did 11 rows. You can do it as thick or as thin height-wise or short as as long as you want for your cup. I did 11 rows and it measures about three inches. And that's all dependent on, like I said, your tension, um, the thickness of your yarn is going to indicate how long the band is. But mine is 9 by 3. And what we're going to do to finish this up is we're going to make sure let me get the scissors, to cut a long tail. I like to use about, I would say eyeballing it, it's about 8, 6 to 8 inches. I would say about more close to 8 inches long. You're going to cut a tail. And like I said, you're going to chain one, but what you're going to do is pull through that end of the yarn, through that chain one, to secure it like a knot. And I like to hold the chain one where it's at and pull to tightly secure and knot it on itself so you won't have to worry about it coming undone. And to finish this pattern, you are going to fold the ends together to make the cup side, the cup, the cozy. And so you're going to make a cylinder. So you're going to fold the ends together. Make it closer. And then you're going to use your tapestry needle. Like I said, I like using the metal ones because they just glide through the yarn a little bit easier. But you can use plastic. Um, I'm sure there's wooden tapestry needles out there as well. But you're going to feed the yarn through. And you're going to make sure to leave a little bit of tail past where you're feeding it through. So when you're stitching it up, it doesn't slide off the hook. And let me get back into camera or closer to end camera. So you're going to insert your hook into the opposite side of where your yarn is. into that first stitch right there. And back through that first stitch on this side. To sew it up. So you're going to work. You're going to sew it up just like that and pull through. Kind of snugly, not too tight because if you pull it too tight, it's going to like bow in on itself. So you're going to do it securely enough to where it's tight, but it's not bowing in on itself. And you're going to basically run your needle through this and just basically work a whip stitch down the opening of this to close it together. So you're just basically, with this pattern, you're making a rectangle panel. And then you're going to be sewing it, whip stitching it together. So just run it through the ends of the rows, the stitches, like such. You're going to want to do that as even as possible down the thing. And you're going to pull tight so it doesn't leave a big gap. So run through, wrap around through and it's kind of basically whip it's whip stitching whip yeah whip stitching and basically just sewing it up so you don't have to work it around you don't have to over complicate it I like honestly I like patterns where I work them in panels and sew them up I can adjust the width of it and the length. 
We're just gonna work that all the way down and get it as even as you can. And make sure to get that last stitch with the last stitch of your row. Sometimes it's hard to make sure to maneuver it that way. I always have a problem with the last stitch, no matter what I do, <laughs> to make sure it is evenly in there. So you're gonna, so you got it all evenly worked out. And what I like to do at the end to secure it a little bit more is I take the working yarn that I just stitched through and the tail from the beginning and tie them together a couple times, especially if it's something like a, a cup cozy or something that's going to have a lot of use and you're going to like take it off cups, put it back on cups, wash it. I like to knot it a couple times just to make sure if I throw it in the washer or if I like say if I'm removing it from a cup. It's not going to come undone at the end. So after you have it all tied up and secure, you're going to have something that looks like, let me get it back in the camera, something that looks like this. And so what you do now is you have a functioning working cup cozy, but you need to make sure to tie in these ends. And you don't want to clip too close to the knot because if you clip too close to the knot, it's going to come undone. So what you're going to do is make sure to insert that tail into your tapestry needle and the best way to sew your ends in is you're going to go through a couple of the stitches right next to it weave in and out like a running stitch and you're going to weave that in and out and pull snugly like snug and then as safely as you can do this take and pull your yarn up and cut as close as possible to your work without cutting your work I've done this sometimes, many of times, or I've just tried to do it quickly and accidentally cut my actual project. Like, no joke. And then you're going to pull the yarn to where it camouflages and hides that tail. So you won't see that tail unless you're really looking for it. And you're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. Like I said, you're going to feed your yarn through your tapestry. You're going to leave a little bit of a tail on the end so it doesn't come undone or come out of the hook. The needle, my bad. The needle as you're doing it and you're gonna do like a running stitch in and out of the stitches and it might take you a second like it takes me a second sometimes to try to weave through especially if there's a lot of density where I'm trying to place my needle but you're gonna run that need the tapestry needle along the fabric and you're gonna pull the tail through the crochet piece to tie that like I said, you're going to pull snugly on the tail, hold, hold where your knot is, pull snugly, tightly through, and then you're going to pull up on it just a little bit, and as careful as you can, you're going to pull up on that tail, and as close as possible without cutting your thing, your project, you're going to cut that tail off. So you're going to have like little tidbits everywhere. Trust me, you're gonna have, once you start crocheting, you will see these things everywhere. You'll have tails everywhere. And then you're going to take your project where you just cut it and slightly tug on it to conceal that tail. And then you're going to turn it right side out. And now you have a fully functioning finished product. You have a cup cozy. And like I said, these work up fairly quickly, especially after you get a hang of the pattern. These will work up super quickly. They work as gifts. They work as, I say, a gift for basically anybody. Anyone that likes to drink coffee or have tumblers. These, Even if they don't have a tumbler, if you want to crochet something that's going to fit around their glasses, it works great. All right, I want to say this fits on my pint glass that I have. It fits on Starbucks cups. Um... I want to say it might fit on mason jars. Like I said, you can just customize it, measure the cup you're doing. And like I said, you want to do a little bit shorter chain than your actual measurement. Not much shorter, just a little bit because like I said, it will stretch. And figure out how many chains, what, 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 or what length you want your chains to go to. Chain that many out. And then just single crochet into the second from the loop. 
These are fully customizable. You can do it in different colors. Um, I know I have a green one floating around. I want to say there's a black one floating around in the house somewhere. Um, they're great to put in like little gift baskets, office gifts, work friend gifts, a little quick gift for a birthday, let's say if you didn't remember to the last minute. Um, basically anyone that uses cups will like these things. They're really cute. Also, if you want to do customizable, you can get like maybe a little patch and fabric glue it on here or sew it on. Those are cute. But yeah, this, this pattern is very simple, very versatile. And like I said, once you get the hang of it, you can do these things very quickly. And it, build, it helps build your tension and helps build your motor skills in your hands to be able to crochet. But yeah, like I said. I, I have a lot of these floating around somewhere, but at the end, it should have a product fits perfectly on the Starbucks tumblers. I know I've seen a lot of people with Starbucks tumblers here lately. These look really cute on it. You can do, um, I know they have variegated yarn. That would be really cute, and it's like a variegated yarn on a cup cozy, or say if you can do it customizable to the person, too. Um, you can do, say the person likes bright, Vivid colors, bright vivid colors, and everything. Give them a couple, like a set. That would be cute. And, like I said, doing simple, something simple like this, you get very fast payoff for the pattern. But, thank you for watching. If you guys want to follow my work, check out my Instagram and just tell me, hey, say what's up, you know. And if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I hope you guys all have a great day. If you guys have any questions, leave in the comment. You can message me on Instagram. I usually reply quickly to Instagram. But I hope you guys have a magical day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.